Good morning and welcome to my session. If you don't know me, my name is Liz McCaw. I'm a Reggio inspired nature kindergarten teacher here on Vancouver Island. And today I wanted to talk about process learning. A couple of years ago, one of my learning cohorts was really interested in making a shift uh, to include Reggio inspired elements in their program. We began with their classroom environment, uh, looking at how children access materials, what materials were curated for their classroom, and um, bringing in a sense of beauty and function to their spaces, and really creating an environment that was uh, for the whole learning community. This shift in practice led to an interest in moving from um, a more traditional approach to learning, teacher-directed, teacher-guided um, learning experiences to student-led and teacher as co-constructor of knowledge. Now, this is a really difficult thing to do if you've been teaching for a long time, for some. And so we decided that we would step into it with process learning uh, through the medium of art. In Reggio-inspired practice, art is a really big um, part of our program. We see the joy and um, the pleasure, the skills, the community, the building of relationships that comes through process learning in our atelier. And so my cohort decided they would use art as the medium. So in a nutshell, process art is child-driven. It's open-ended and each piece is unique and reflects the interests of the child. If you're interested in learning more about the benefits of process learning, I've included a link in this session. So just follow the link and you can read at length the benefits of process learning for um, our students and for ourselves as well. Now as a Resio inspired educator, I have embedded process learning in the kindergarten program. And this is throughout the program, including our self-directed play, math, science, and literacy. I've made important considerations uh, for space, materials, time, and beauty. The Early Learning Framework, the BC Early Learning Framework, um, says that when educators notice how space is used by children, they can creatively respond, providing spaces to open possibilities for children to extend their thinking and experiment with new ways of being. When you transition to a Reggio-inspired program with a focus on process learning, it provides the educator with an opportunity to reflect on their role in the learning environment. And one of the changes that we often see is that the teacher's new role is to co-construct knowledge with their learners. We spend a lot of time observing the children, playing with the children, having conversations with the children, and scaffolding their learning. In the atelier, we urge teachers to create beautiful display spaces. And you can find these spaces in a myriad of ways. In this classroom example, I used empty shelves to provide some nature provocations, um, empty space to display their shelves using plexiglass pitcher stands, and I um, used Velcro uh, 3M stickers to attach empty picture frames to the drywall at the back of the shelf. So the students were able to create art and display it temporarily or long-term on this wall. I used the surface in front of the picture frames um, for students to access materials, but also as a stand-in workstation for art. I also like to use clotheslines in my classroom and in the hallway outside of my classroom. These clotheslines provide an instant a place for students to go and independently hang their art. At the end of the day, if they want to take it home, they just go and they just use the clothes peg to release it and carry it with them out the door. I love this opportunity for students to choose what kind of art they want to do and where in the room there is a best fit for display, how long they want to display it. Some students, like Ben, 
who did this beautiful, interesting forest picture using uh, scraps of paper and pens. He wanted this to go into his portfolio. Um, as did Emily want this beautiful flower that she did using spring loose parts to go into her learning portfolio as well. Sometimes they'll uh, take a picture with our class iPad and upload it to their ePortfolio and add um, some introspection or some comments or description of their thinking, much like a, a story um, that we would write about our students and share with families. Now, as a nature uh, teacher, we usually spend every other morning outdoors. And I do the whole morning so that I can offer my students a long block of time for self-directed play. So when we're in the forest or the beach, they'll get an hour or more. And the alternate day when we're in the classroom, they'll also get an hour or more. And during this self-directed play time, they access loose parts in the classroom and many, many of the children visit our atelier. When we go off-site, we bring an art kit with us and, and the art kit will have whatever the current interest is of the children. So this past spring, they've had a real interest in chalk, a wet chalk art, dry chalk art, and mixed, mixed chalk mediums using Sharpies, um, crayons, and other kinds of collage materials with wet chalk. We work with clay in our classroom. It's the first art material that I introduced to my students in September. And we work with clay all year. And when the clay starts to dry up, we take it into the forest and we use forest loose parts up to create art to leave in the forest uh, for passerbys to enjoy. And so on this morning, we integrated clay with our math. At that time, we were working on symmetry. And so they collected loose parts and they made uh, symm symmetry pancakes to leave in the forest for uh, new visitors to enjoy. Here's a couple of photos. The one on the left is from a beach morning where students were collecting loose parts and um, decorating uh, sandcastles that they were building. They did mandelas. Um, they were making paths. They were decorating logs. They created stores with loose parts and were selling their art uh, for small pebbles. On the right-hand side is a photo from the internet. And what I loved about this is that the students were combining nature loose parts with leftover clay in the forest, much like my class does. Now, if you're wondering how to find space for art in your classroom, um, here are a few considerations. You could use vertical spaces like an easel. I have large tables. My tables actually nestle together um, to grow from four feet to eight feet if the students are working on larger murals. And I have um, collapsible tables for the hallway uh, for long-term projects. And we often move our art outdoors. An art cart, um, like the ones from Ikea or Michaels, can hold tools and current paint material while a nearby cupboard can store overflow materials in easy to transport containers. The top of a shelf offers a more intimate workspace. So here's an example of our cart from Michaels. And you can actually, from Ikea now, you can actually buy wooden tops so that if you wanted the top of your cart to be a surface, you could put materials underneath, surplus, and then they could have the top uh, to stand and draw on or work on. I often repurpose wooden boxes and use that um, as a carrying box for my students. So here's an old wooden box that we actually put together at home uh, with some wood scraps and just put a stain on it. And it's lightweight and holds the ever popular uh, markers for the students. This is transient art and I love to offer invitations for my students to create transient art by setting out simple materials in an empty frame. I'll put a small pots of materials. I'll put a plexiglass mirror. I might use a table, table mat. I want to appeal to students who are just getting used to messy play and students who like to start and finish a project 
or who are becoming accustomed to taking risks and trying something new. So these are just two examples from my classroom. One is um, items from the forest and the second is items from our beach. Here's another example of ways to invite children to learn through process art. And so what we did was we offered some books. We brought in a very large raven's nest, uh, drawings of ravens, and some magnifying glasses, and some pencils. And we put um, just loose paper on clipboards and invited the children to look, to touch, to compare, and to draw what they see. Here's a fun example. This is transient art where I won some wiki sticks at a workshop and I thought, hmm, what will I do with these? And we took our MDF boards and just put them on the table um, with one example and let the children explore the wiki sticks um, using the MDF board as their mat. And at the end of their session, they could leave it for other people to look at or they could take it apart and put the pieces into the basket. Here's another example of transient art. And what we did was we just invited the children to do some beading on these um, sparkly gold pipe cleaners and then twist it and decorate our uh, bead tree. And what I love about this is that it isn't any one person. You can work on it for a while, work on the display, go away, do something else, and someone new can come and add on to what you started. And it becomes a community project. I love to use tinker trays. I have many different tinker trays in different areas of my room. This is the tinker tray in my atelier, and it's reflecting the interests of the students in my class. So they're really interested in um, building um, up, and so they like to attach things and clip things. Um, they do some stringing, and then there's the gluers. And so I've got sticks and string, clothes pegs. I've got up cut up pieces of leftover watercolor paper from some of their other projects, and I included some wire um, as well. I always recommend introducing your art materials slowly and provide time for the children to explore the materials and play with the materials. We never ever uh, have an art experience one time. We have multiple, multiple experiences. And here's an example Another example of taking some clay that was starting to dry up into the forest and just using it to um, decorate with loose parts. This is very open-ended. Here's another example of taking some leftover clay into the forest and using loose parts to decorate. And on this day, um, they were really interested in fairies. They were having a lot of small role play in the classroom with fairies, um, reading books about fairies, drawing fairies, bringing fairies from home, transforming pig dolls into fairies. And so I brought some jewels with me and invited the students to create fairy homes. Um, and if they created a fairy home, they could have a little jewel to leave behind. I like to integrate some of our practiced art uh, frameworks like water, using watercolor and Sharpies together into other areas of our program. So here's a reflection wall that my students were working on and they were talking about um, not giving up, just trying again and again, just like the salmon. And so um, they did a sketch and finished a close sentence on what they do to what they want to get better at and how they do that. And so they did um, drawings of a bear and then used their watercolor, just a, a really wet wash on watercolor paper um, to draw the bear. There are many, many opportunities for students to show their learning using art. Here's another one. Um, we were doing force emotion with our student teacher and we decided that we would integrate art into our science learning. And so we invited the learners to use a variety of materials, stone, stick, shells, marbles, feathers. We even had marbles of different weights, really heavy ones, uh, really large ones, really tiny ones. And they tipped the box in different directions, going slow and then going fast, um, a steep dip, a shallow dip. 
They use different kinds of boxes, deep boxes, shallow boxes. And after a couple of weeks, when they lost interest in marbles, they moved on to a salad spinner and started all over again with spinning. Going fast, going slow, using one color, using multicolors, using different kinds of paper. They just experimented uh, with paint in this way, and it really engaged them. Loris Malaguzzi was one of the leaders in Reggio Emilia after World War II. And when they were putting together their early learning program, it was really the women in the community that were looking for somewhere for their children to be while they returned to work. And he came along and he immediately saw the benefits of this program and added his expertise. And this is one of his famous quotes, the wider the range of possibilities we offer children, the more intense will be their motivations, the richer will be their experiences. And as he developed the 100 languages of children, which is 100 ways that children can express their thinking and feeling, um, and that exhibit traveled around the world, this quote followed that exhibit. Now, as a Reggio-inspired educator, nurturing relationships and building a strong and kind community, they're two of my top five goals. And one approach is to encourage collaboration by inviting students to participate with an art project each month. I do this in the beginning months of school and in the ending months of school. And to create a larger workspace for big collaborations where I invite students from cross grades to join us, I'll set up collapsible tables in the hall and I'll leave that out with the materials for students to come from their classrooms and work in small groups. And oftentimes when students arrive, like for example from a grade 3 or grade 5 classroom, some of my students will go out and they'll just work with them for a little bit and then come back into the classroom. Here's an example of one of our projects early in the year. And what we did was they chose the colors, they uh, laid it on the cardboard, they flattened the cardboard, they collected the cardboard, they mixed up the paint colors, they glued the objects on using lots and lots of white liquid paint, and then they painted it. And this is one of those projects that sat on a table and children would come and work on it for a while and then go. And sometimes they're small, and like this one, and then sometimes they're four to six feet long and they ended up on a wall, um, almost hammered into the wall, they're so heavy. But I love these collaborative projects. There's lots of conversation, lots of uh, back and forth, making decisions, negotiating, listening, advising. It's just really um, amazing to be a part of these collaborative projects. Plan on introducing your materials slowly and provide time for children to explore and play with the materials. Keep it really simple. I don't provide a sample. I just put out the materials and invite the children to play with it. If a skill is involved, like how to use uh, watercolor brushes, um, how to clean the brush, how to dip and tap, then I might work with small groups, teaching the skill of how to use the brush with small pieces of paper. And as time goes on, when they don't need me anymore, I can just uh, tape paper uh, with um, painter's tape so it doesn't roll up and provide different materials for them to explore or revisit using watercolor paints. Chalk is another medium that's been introduced and reintroduced in our art room. We began with it outdoors. I'm just drawing with chalk and exploring chalk again with no directions or models. And then um, when they were um, seemed to really uh, be finished with that interest, I reintroduced it with water and small pieces of watercolor paper. The next thing I did was I invited them to combine an interest in mind drawing with colored Sharpies and the chalk. And they used the chalk as a paintbrush and they used their fingers just to push the paint close to the lines. Now, this um, art activity sits on our shelves and the choosing children use the chalk in so many different ways. Sometimes they'll grade it and they'll make chalk paint. Sometimes they'll get a jar and they'll put it in the water and they'll use it as a paintbrush. Or sometimes they'll just draw um, with the chalk uh, crayons on different colored papers. Uh, they like the black because it pops. Um, they like to mix mediums, so I love that they know how to use this tool. They're responsible for resetting the art area when they're finished, 
and they know that they can make choices in how to use it. When process learning becomes a big part of your program, then you start to look at how you can provide them with this time to use the materials, to explore the materials, and to create and work together. And so I want them to have multiple experience with art tools and materials. I want to invite them to explore, reuse, combine, and create. And so in order to do this, I offer large blocks of time for self-directed learning. If you're interested in my daily flow, I've posted my full daily flow plan on my link tree. And um, of course, it's quite different in June. And in the winter, I'll update it again with my winter daily flow. If you're interested in what it looks like in June, just um, shoot me a, a message and I'll send you a copy of my June daily flow from this year. Now, I believe that children deserve beautiful places. They respond to a place that is calm, the warm colors, the spacious uh, sense of place. It's very comforting and it's very calming. I design my space around the children I'm teaching. So when I start my year, I have less furniture and less materials. I curate everything I bring into the space, everything that's on the shelves they have access to. I want to provide nooks for children to work in small groups. I've got tables that push together for larger groups. I've got quiet, intimate spaces that just seat two, a comfy chair or some pillows. I add fresh flowers and greenery to the space, and I leave the tops of shelves empty and windows clear so that nature becomes a part of the space. I use a projector to add a nature element with videos and soft music while the children work and play together. Each morning, the children are welcomed into a room that is clean and fresh smelling. Thank you for visiting my Instagram account. Please, please um, visit my other videos that I've made for you on my YouTube channel. Um, they're usually about 30 minutes long. And if you're just interested in the slideshow, I've uploaded them to my link tree as well. Thank you.